Good evening uh, to all of you as per the time zone from which uh, you've logged in and welcome to the conference call of Q2 FY 2020 results and business updates. Thank you for taking uh, your time for uh, attending this call. Before I begin, I'd like to uh, share with you some quick updates. We are very happy to inform you that we have closed the entire land purchase of uh, GSK that we were in uh, for Thana property and we have taken possession for the same as well. We have also received our approval prior to the August uh, deadline. Uh, the transaction was closed at an average price of about 15 crores per acre and uh, it is uh, way lower than the transaction that uh, uh, Raymond's did for 35 crores per acre which is literally adjacent to our property. Uh, our annuity business uh, continues to do well we have now fully leased uh, Commerce 2. We have started uh, the construction for Commerce 3 as well. You are also aware that an IT search uh, was carried out in the month of August. You are also aware that our company follows uh, and implements the best practices of compliance with all applicable laws. We have uh, we've clarified this to the stock exchange uh, that we do not anticipate any uh, material impact uh, of this search on our company. The matter is subjudiced and uh, we do not uh, intend to take any questions uh, during the, on this uh, subject during the call, which I hope you will understand and appreciate. Business for us uh, anyway continues to be uh, you know, as usual. Uh, with this now I'll hand over the call to our group CFO Somil Daru, who will take you through the numbers. And I'm again, uh, as usual, happy to be addressing all your individual questions. Uh, which uh, we will go through uh, after this. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Oberoi. <clears throat> I guess uh, most of you would have gone through the presentation. If not, the same is also available on our website along with the results which have been filed with the exchanges. Uh, we'll keep things uh, short as usual to uh, help us allocate adequate time for the Q&A. Uh, in terms of consolidated financials, uh, we achieved a total consolidated revenue of 505 crores for this quarter as against 618 crores for the previous quarter and 619 crores for same quarter last year. The consolidated PBT was 192 crores for this quarter as against 216, for, uh, 216 crores for Q1 FY20 and 307 crores for Q2 FY19. And the consolidated PAT numbers was 138 crores for this quarter as against 152 for Q1 FY20 and 213 crores for Q2 FY19. Moving on to the asset level performances, the investment properties continued their steady and strong performance. Oberoi Mall, which is our retail asset, contributed 40 crores to the top line uh, in this quarter as against 39 crores for the last quarter and 37 crores for the same quarter last year. EBITDA margins in this vertical are in excess of 94%. Commerce, which is the office space asset, contributed about 10 crores to this quarter, uh, to the top line this quarter, <coughs> uh, as well as uh, the same numbers for the last quarter and the same quarter last year. The EBITDA margins in this vertical continue again to be in excess of 94%. Commerce 2 Phase 1 uh, contributed about 30 crores for this quarter, as against 29 crores for uh, Q1 FY20 and uh, 18 crores for Q2 FY19. Uh, the Western Mumbai Garden City contributed about 31 crores to the top line for this quarter as against 32 crores for Q1 FY20 and 32 crores for Q2 FY19. The EBITDA margin in this vertical are in excess of 32%. We now move to our development properties. For Esquire, uh, we booked close to about 19,000 square feet in this quarter, till date about 16.74 lakh square feet, which is about 79% of the inventory. Total booking value for this quarter was 41 crores as against 124 crores in the preceding quarter and 110 crores for Q2 FY19. The cumulative booking value till date is about 2,719 crores. The total revenue recognized for this project in this quarter is 46 crores and the cumulative revenue recognition till date is 2,719 crores on account of 100% project completion. For Prisma, of the total project, uh, out of the total project, we have booked about close to 9,200 square feet. Till date, we have booked 2.49 lakh square feet, which is about 93% of the inventory in this project. The total booking value this quarter was 19 crores, as against 16 crores of Q1 FY20 and 17 crores for Q2 FY19. Cumulative booking value till date is about 443 crores, and this entire uh, and out of this, the cumulative revenue recognition till date is about 438 crores on account of 100% of project completion. For Mulund Eternia, uh, in this quarter we booked close to about 18,500 square feet, till date 6.34 lakh square feet. Total booking value this quarter was 23 crores, as against 27 crores in Q1 FY20 and 34 crores for same quarter last year. 
Cumulative booking value till date is 922 crores, and the total revenue recognized for this project in this quarter is 49 crores, and the cumulative revenue recognition till date is about 478 crores. For Enigma, in this quarter we booked close to about 12,000 square feet, till date 4.43 lakh square feet. Total booking value this quarter was 15 crores as against 34 crores for Q1 FY20 and 10 crores for the same quarter last year. Uh, the cumulative booking value till date stands at 651 crores. For Sky City, uh, this quarter was close to, uh, the booking this quarter was close to 45,100 square feet and till date about 17.68 lakh square feet. Total booking value for uh, Q2 FY20 was uh, 72 crores as against 187 crores for uh, the last quarter and 130 crores for the same quarter last year. Until date, booking value is 2,820 crores. The total revenue recognized for this project in this quarter stands at about 220 crores and cumulative revenue recognition till date is about 1,682 crores. For uh, 360 West Oasis, we booked again close to uh, about 36,100 square feet in this quarter. The total booking value for this quarter was 150 crores and till date the booking value is about 2,402 crores. Coming back to some key financial parameters, our adjusted uh, EBITDA margins for this quarter was 46%, fat margins was at about 28% and the EBITDA margins for the mall and the commerce businesses are uh, much higher than the average as mentioned before. Excluding these, the margins for our PR residential business stands at about 37% for Q2 FY20. Thank you and this, uh, with this, uh, we are now uh, happy to take any questions that you all have. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on the attached tone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Tanuj Mukheja from Bank of America. Please go ahead. Uh, hi, thank you for taking my question. Uh, my first question is on uh, the recent launch, Oberoi Maximine Andheri. Uh, just wanted to confirm two things. Can you describe or discuss about the response to Oberoi Maxima? And secondly, uh, I could see advertisements saying that the subvention scheme is available for Oberoi Maxima. So are subvention schemes back at Oberoi Reality Projects in full way? So, uh, you know, we got a very good response for Maxima. And uh, to answer whether subvention schemes are back, so subvention schemes were never taken away. Uh, the banks are still continuing to support that. And uh, they are selective about the customers. So we are good to go with uh, them as well. Okay, understood. The second follow-up question is actually on your you know, uh, units booked in second quarter FI20. Uh, the run rate uh, or the units booked at Sky City and Esquire are clearly below your run rate for the previous quarters. Uh, and given submission scheme was on and full swing across projects, so what would you attribute the slowdown in sales uh, at Sky City and your Goreka project? You know, uh, this was, uh, Tanuj, this was a slow quarter for all industries across all sectors. I don't think we are any different. We are not bigger than the Indian economy. We are not bigger than our sector. So having said that, I guess, you know, it's just one of those uh, quarters where, uh, you know, everything seems to be slow. But this is, again, I would say, uh, you know, a passing phase. Uh, you know, we were discussing the other day that what are you really left with? What are the options with people who have money? You know, they are scared of keeping that money in the bank. They, uh, you know, uh, most of the... Uh, what you call, uh, you know, uh, NBFCs and, uh, uh, you know, all of these are, are also an iffy. So I think real estate is the only, among amongst the safest play where they can really put that money back. I feel not only would original demand come back, but I also see that, uh, you know, investors will come back uh, into real estate and, and with very few developers left who have the credibility I think we stand a great chance. So, I mean, I'm not really unduly worried about one quarter. We continue to commit ourselves, back ourselves, build as much as we can, and, and you know, be ready. So, that's where we are. Understood. Thanks. And last question from my end. Uh, you know, if you could just give us, you know, more details about your Thane project launch, timeline, project specifications, area of launch that you can share, given that you have now got land fully acquired. So, you know, uh, we are still on the drawing board, actually. Uh, we have certain uh, strategies, but we want to open them up closer to launch, which should ideally be uh, in the fourth quarter. And uh, uh, so, again, you know, it's just uh, kept very tightly because we don't want, you know, competition like any other sector has 
started reacting very quickly on what one is doing. So we want to wait uh, and, and only announce when we announce for the market. So one thing I can tell you is that we are aiming at the uh, last quarter of this financial year and uh, we we have something very innovative coming up. Again, like I said, that our, our purchase price for uh, Thana has been so good that we can really play the volume game, the price game, and, uh, you know, go out aggressively. If I can just squeeze in one more question. You know, we uh, initially had plans to even launch exquisite phase three uh, in Goregaon. So just your thoughts uh, on next phase of launch in Goregaon. So uh, for people who have visited our office would know that we have started work and we are literally at fourth slab and the fifth slab of, uh, uh, you know, uh, phase three. It's just a matter of <clears throat> time again. It could be uh, it could be either uh, the last quarter or the first quarter of next year, uh, depending on how things go. Uh, and uh, we will do that as well. So as far as execution goes, we haven't... Uh, you know, uh, we've already started that. It's only a matter of time. Again, like I said, that the last quarter was not, you know, something that we need to uh, write home about. Hence, we just want to play it out and see how the market pans out. Like I said, we are optimistic, but we want to see that optimism on ground and then take uh, a call. Great. Uh, thanks, Vikas, for answering my questions. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Puneet from HSBC. Please go ahead. Yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, just a couple of questions. Number one, can you give some sense of what is your uh, plan for CAPEX in terms of, you know, your commercial office spaces? How much you intend to spend this year and next year? So, uh, you know, we have uh, started construction for uh, Commerce 3. I think uh, this would be, what, uh, 2.5 million? Yeah, about 3 million. Sorry, 1.8 million square feet. Stop it. Leasable. Leasable. So we have 1.8 million uh, square feet leasable in our phase 3, which is a little over two and a half times of uh, Commerce 2, which is under construction. And uh, we, uh, we, we see this getting completed by 2022 of uh, April. March, March 2022, it gets completed. Work has already started, contract awarded, and uh, yeah, that's it. I thought the original uh, uh, Puneet, I'm size sorry was Puneet, I'm sorry to interrupt. We are getting background disturbance from your line. If you can move to a quieter place, we could hear you clearly. Sorry. Yeah, is it better? Yes, thank you. Yeah, so uh, I thought the original plan was 2.3 million square feet. Has it been cut down to 1.8? No, the original plan was always uh, 1.8 million. Okay. And and can you also give some sense of what is the plan for the Glaxo land? Uh, Thana or uh, Worli? Uh, no, sorry, Worli. Sorry? W Worli. Okay, so Worli, uh, we are doing a mall, we are doing yeah. office, and we are doing a small hotel on top. A any breakup of what the configuration would be? Mm. So the mall is 800,000 square feet. Office is 900,000 square feet. Okay. And the hotel is about 150,000 square feet. Okay. And, and 900,000 leasable, 900, leasable. Yeah. And 150,000 is a very small, like 800 room hotel, just to kind of you know brand the building and stuff like that. And there again, work has started. Uh, as you all know, our property. Uh, is connected to the metro station and yeah. uh, you know so we expect a, a huge footfall for our mall accessibility for our office you literally get out of the metro and walk into the office building or the mall that's how connected because this is an underground metro and we've got okay. connectivity this way so again really happy with the way things are panned out for that project and, and timeline for this uh, again uh, you know we are giving ourselves anywhere between two and a half and three years to finish everything Okay. And work has started here also. Okay, that's great. Uh, lastly, any benefit of tax that you guys expect? I still see 28% tax rate for this quarter. Correct. So by uh, you know by the before the end of next quarter, uh, before the end of December quarter, we will be through with our working, and uh, we 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 obviously see benefit in what the government has offered. We want to be prudent about how we can maximize 
and then move into uh, the new regime. Of course, there is going to be uh, you know a, a sizable amount of benefit because I mean, barring the uh, you know mat credit, we genuinely don't get any other benefit as such. So for the real estate industry as a sector, I think this is a very good call. Yeah, great. So, uh, uh, third one, uh, on the Enigma side, why is there a huge divergence between Enigma and Eternia's project completion? Can you help me understand it a bit? No, there is no diversion. I mean, uh, both timelines are the same. If you are talking about uh, sales velocity or right. revenue recognition as well. Revenue recognition is only based on uh, the sales, uh, nothing other than that. Eternia happens to be smaller units and hence are selling slightly better than the uh, Enigma units. And Enigma units will sell when they get ready because, you know, it's, it's a larger ticket size. People want to sell their existing apartment and then move in. So, uh, you know, the, the sales there are not, you know, keeping pace to what Eternia has. And that's why you see revenue recognition uh, slower than... So, uh, Puneet Samil here. Uh, yeah. As far as uh, Enigma is concerned, uh, we have not yet hit the threshold of achieving 25% of the area sold. So if you would recollect last year when we uh, uh, moved over to India's 115, we had said yeah. that for projects where we have not yet hit that 25% threshold, our revenue recognition will be only to the extent of cost. Uh, once it crosses this 25% threshold, then even the profit recognition will begin. In fact, if you will look at it in this quarter for Sky City E also, uh, that is what has happened. So now the profit recognition is coming as far as Borivili is concerned, even from Sky City E. So that's but the reason for the difference of the how. Question, right? Yeah, sorry. So that is how Eternia and Enigma are moving slightly differently. That's all. Okay, okay, fair enough. And uh, sorry, the last one is on uh, uh, e commerce one. The leasable area seems to have gone down a bit. Uh, so some churn, I mean, you know, it's only temporary, but. Uh, so you have that. Area, uh, which used to be 3 one, it is now 3 0 correct, correct, correct. So there's just, uh, you know, some churn happening, somebody moving out, somebody moving in, you give rent free, all those uh, issues, nothing other than that. We would have taken some bit of that office space for ourselves, for our own requirements. That is why you would have seen that come off. Okay, okay. Okay, great. That's all from my side. Thank you so much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Atul Tiwari from City Group. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, sir, could you uh, throw some more light on uh, the Thane land transaction? So, uh, especially with the, respect to the cost, so 15 crore rupees per acre versus 35 crore that you mentioned. So, why uh, uh, is your cost so low compared to the other transaction that you mentioned? We got a good deal, yeah. That's it. <laughs> Nothing other than that. It's too much of a difference, sir. Yeah, I know. Uh, I mean, CR uh, versus 35 CR. You know, if you all know that we had locked in almost a year, year and a half ago, and, uh, uh, you know, we had paid those monies also a year, year and a half ago. It took us a lot of time and patience in getting this uh, deal done. But uh, it's done today, and we are very happy, very lucky that, uh, you know, uh, it's worked out to us at this price. And happy for Raymond to have sold it at that price because it also sets a benchmark for us. Okay, sir. And, sir, uh, my final question is on uh, any comment or color on the situation, you know, in the property space, especially given the backdrop of liquidity squeeze and, the, uh, and everything that is going on. Um, you know, how is the stress level for other developers? Are you guys seeing some kind of deals being, you know, offered to you for rescuing some of the stress projects? Are you interested or not interested at all? Any kind of color will be great. So, Atul, in fact, uh, you know, uh, there is a huge amount of elimination of competition. The way things are going, there will be very few developers left. Uh, developers who have good reputation, good track record, have delivered projects in time, delivered quality and who customer trusts and put that money in. So one is your basic need uh, for housing will be served by a few of us, number one. Number two, you know, you have very little option uh, with your cash, uh, you know, to deploy uh, anywhere. And uh, the financial, uh, you know, other products are also not that desirable and uh, so on and so forth. People are skeptical about mutual fund and so on and so forth. So I would say that in a given scenario, uh, real estate may not have appreciated as much, but it's never failed people as far as it, you know, 
holding on to the value is concerned. So a mix of, uh, you know, future use, wanting to upgrade, people would want to use their money in buying homes. So I'm again saying that, you know, you know, like, I completely agree. Your 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 business is on a day to day why not not even quarter on quarter, but uh, I would say that uh, one quarter really doesn't uh, indicate uh, anything. Uh, we see the slowness in the market, and uh, it'll be the market will bounce back, bounce back for people again with those conditions put through. Uh, to answer your next question, do you get offers? Of course, we get a lot of offers, but uh, unlike uh, you know any other factory. Uh, in land, most of these developers have created third-party interests. Those third parties have either taken them to RERA or NCLT. So unlike a steel plant that goes into NCLT where, you know, the incoming party gives money and takes over, here, even if you go through NTLC and, and its resolution, the buyer has a very powerful tool of going to RERA and, and you know, digging things out. So you may take the liability of, you know, developing and finishing it, but you don't, you're not excused from the liability that it was supposed to be delivered on so and so time and those penalties and put together. So all those guys will come much before you liquidate. So we are very skeptical. We want to see how this plays out. Uh, you know, uh, uh, what sort of uh, safeguards will the new developer get? You know, uh, qua these. Uh, you know, uh, flat holders who have already booked. So, so these are things that we want certain clarities for. Number one, number two, and as a group, we have decided that we will not do any brownfield projects. Almost not do any brownfield projects because what people come to us is for quality, how we build, how we design, how we utilize to our design, uh, committed 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 to our design. Uh, and we do not want to take brownfield projects. But uh, greenfield, if there's land and if it's, you know, uh, it can, it's only financial strain on the developer, then one can look at it. But most developers have created multiple rights in the property and it comes with own set of legacies. And so long as I'm going to get property like Thana, which are cheaper, uh, why would I want to chance my arm, you know, in doing these other things which could unnecessarily drag us down? Sure, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much for your thoughts. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Samir Baisiwala from Morgan Stanley. Please go ahead. Hi, thanks. Uh, good evening, everyone. Hi, good evening. Uh, Samir, uh, you've not started recognizing for Worldly 360. I thought you had hit 25% now, no? Uh, hi, Samir. Uh, so, yeah, basically, what happens is as far as the uh, books are concerned, uh, we move on the basis of the full potential. What we have announced to you all so far has only been uh, that uh, the area on the basis of 65 floors. Uh, we still feel that, uh, you know, we will be able to go a little, uh, uh, maybe there is a chance for a little bit uh, over and above that to come in. So if we factor in that total potential, then we have not yet hit 25% at least as far as the accounting books are concerned. So once we have full clarity on that, and that should be in a quarter or so, then we will be able to tell you exactly at what stage uh, does revenue recognition commence. I mean, our early project, uh, uh, you know, originally planned for 89 floors. We actually have approvals up to 75, but we have uh, civil aviation clearance only up to 65. And that is exactly the potential we've actually told you all. But like I said, like Somil said, that we have approvals for 75 floors in our hand. So that is the FSI potential we have. Um, uh, we are more or less, uh, you know, as days go by, very clear and getting sure that it won't go beyond 65. But uh, we just want to wait it out for this quarter and then see and then finally take a call and move on. And that is for the back tower or both the towers? No, only for the back tower. The front tower is already topped out. There is uh, no no further potential. And even in the back tower, we are seeing whether we can get three, four flows extra or things like that, you know. Okay. Oh. Okay, that's clear. Uh, second is on your Thane land, um, uh, Vikas. So I was a little surprised to see that the land cost is 550 crores, and I think you have put out 340 crores for regulatory charges. I've okay. never seen regulatory charges to be 60% plus of the land cost. So anything specific going on here? Uh, 
I would love to use your voice to go to the government and tell them that this is way too high. We've been protesting, but then they turn around and tell us that, look, there are people who are buying. So, you know, it's a combination of ready reckoner and this and that and all that put together. So one couldn't help, but uh, this is money gone to the government under various premiums and, you know, ULC and this one and that one. It hurts us, but, you know, uh, that's the law, unfortunately. So uh, would you be required to now pay for TDR and FSI anymore, or is everything... Of course, one will be required to pay TDR and FSI, but like I said, that if I compare it on a per acre basis, a similar okay. land parcel has gone at 35 crores where we paid 15. So if that is of any, you know, uh, consolation for us. <laughs> no, of course, you got a good deal, but I'm just, uh, I didn't I, realize that it's so discretionary. But I like what you said, you know, I mean, I really like what you said, and I genuinely, personally also feel, why should the government be charging us so much money? But they do. It used to be 100% at one point. They have rationalized it to 40, and that 40 is on the ready reckoner rate, and the ready reckoner rates are higher, and all that, all that put together works out to this much. Okay, and I presume for Raymond Land transaction also the same would have... Applied. So 35 is an all-inclusive price for the buyer, and uh, 15 is an all-inclusive price for us. No, the split, I mean to say, or is, is there anything specific for you? Oh, no, 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 the same, same. They've also paid similar monies. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah. excellent. And uh, so, I mean, just on your balance sheet, there seems to be a big movement Q1 to Q2 on the asset side in inventory and in other current asset. Correct. So basically, Thana, which was appearing as a, uh, what we can say as an advance, has now moved into inventory. So oh. that's your primary change. Okay. Okay, got it. Okay, got it. And just final uh, question, uh, because uh, is there any financing um, uh, sort of limitation that your buyers are facing or there's no problem on that side? Um, okay, so people in Mulun are facing some, uh, you know, financial limitations. These are people who, I mean, you know, uh, either don't have, you know, enough income on record or whatever, but, uh, you know, only that market is where we feel uh, uh, some bit of disconnect. Earlier, uh, NBFCs used to, you know, really consider many other ways of evaluating and doing that. Now, in their absence, these guys are a little handicapped when it comes to buying. So we do feel only that market, but uh, Borivli, uh, Goregaon and all that, these are not at all an issue. Now, I guess even they, I'm, I'm seeing very slowly, are, uh, you know, uh, conscious of that fact that they'll have to build it up or whatever. So I see a genuine effort from these guys, you know. Okay. Uh, with your permission, one more. Uh, so for worldly Glapso land, um, I hear your split between the mall and the office, hmm. but given the acute shortage of space for offices, as I understand, in this area now, actually pretty much, um, I would say that m much of length and better for greater Mumbai, uh, would you not want to increase uh, more of office over here? So, uh, you know, we did that math. We kind of did a, a perfect balance between the two. If I were to just simply run the numbers, uh, BKC is at anywhere between 450 and 500 rupees on carpet, I would say. Uh, you know, uh, whether it's uh, one BKC or uh, make a max city. So it's between these numbers. Uh, we would get something similar for residential, uh, sorry, for uh, offices in Burley. And uh, if I were to compare what I get in Goregaon for my mall, I'm getting you know, similar numbers or, in fact, uh, from vanilla stores, even better numbers than the numbers that I talked about. So I would say that if I am basically only hedging my bet by splitting uh, office and retail, uh, and, and retail gives me uh, similar or, in fact, little better rental than what offices give me, and they both complement each other, and uh, retail gets built faster, so I'm going to build the retail and start, uh, uh, you know, the mall much before the whole office building gets ready. So it's, it's like a combination of multiple things, hedging our bet, number one. Number two is, uh, you know, I can build this faster 
three is the revenue that I get out of both. The least are similar, if not mall being superior, the least are similar. So that's the, and like the biggest thing is that they complement each other. So that's why we, we kind of move to this. So we had what you said in mind, that what if we do a simple office building and just simply lease that out. That also was considered, but we have enough critical mass for the office also. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Kunal Lakhan from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Hi, Kunal. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. Uh, hi. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, just quick, quickly on, on uh, 360 West, uh, this, uh, what's the status of the OC here? Uh, well, we've applied for OC and, uh, you know, like, uh, and, and uh, hoping that another three, four months we should get it. Okay, and and uh, we sold well in this quarter. So, uh, in in say anticipation of OC, are we seeing like better footfalls, better traction there? In fact, we sold a lot more. I mean, it's just uh, that it's spilled into the next quarter, which probably will come to you. Uh, yes, I see a lot of traction after having applied for OC, and for everyone's uh, benefit, we've also started handing over. Uh, you know, uh, we've started giving people access to do their interiors. So that itself has also worked out very well. Today, a lot of families are already, uh, you know, doing their interiors. And that message has also gone very well. Sure, that's, that's good to hear. Um, lastly, on, uh, on the Mullen project, like, uh, I mean, uh, across both the projects, if you look at like it's almost 70% of uh, inventories unsold. Uh, um, and then the project is expected to be completed over the next, say, one and a half, two years. Um, so, uh, what's the strategy here? And uh, uh, could we? Uh, it's, I mean, most likely we could see we could see a situation where we uh, will see a Gorevli, or sorry, a Goregav-like situation where uh, we will have to probably give a, a deferred payment plan uh, uh, you know, here as well. I mean, I just wanted to know what what's the thought process here to monetize this. You know, again, uh, we are continuing to watch how the market pans out. And like I said, that uh, this has been an unusual quarter, but uh, uh, Mulun started very, very well. And then uh, you saw many other developers launching, a lot of them failing. So again, you know, there is, uh, there are probably only three uh, or four developers with reputation who are out building. A lot of them have fallen aside. So that also has worked in our favor. The building is now topping up. Again, that's working in our favor. The building is looking good, come out well, and, uh, you know, so we'll have to just, you know, wait it out and see how this pans out. And then, like, you know, we'll sell and we'll go by market forces and do what it takes for us to, uh, you know, uh, clear our inventory. Sure, sure. All right. Thanks so much and, and all the best. Thank you, Vinod. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Chintan Modi from Modi Lal Oswal. Please go ahead. <laughs> Yeah, hi, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, what no, like you know, uh, we have seen in case of 360 West, Eternia and Enigma, uh, the rate per uh, the average rate for the quarter is approximately eight to ten percent lower compared to the uh, whatever we have sold till date. Uh, want your thoughts on that? So, Chintan, there are no discounts. Every quarter has sales from various levels of our project. If the uh, flats are sold at a lower level, then you see a lower realization because ours are prices are, you know, uh, indicative of the floor rise also. So if you take a lower floor, the per square foot yield is lower. If you take a higher floor, then the per square foot yield is higher. And that's where you see from our end, there has been no price change at all. Okay, sure. And uh, just to confirm one thing on the Thane land parcel, so we will continue to get those ATIB benefits. We launched yeah, I mean, you know, we will, uh, we, we, we have uh, approvals prior to August and we will get that benefit. Now, with the new tax regime, the company wants to take a call whether we want to get into the, the, the ATIB benefit or we take a flat, uh, you know, the new tax rate. 22% tax, tax rate. So we want to play that out uh, because, you know, uh, ORL has, Goregaon ORL has, the rest of Thana to be built, and so on and so forth. So we want to see how this plays out, and then we'll take that benefit because this new tax uh, benefit itself is a good uh, incentive and a game changer. Sure, sure. That's it from mine. Thank you. 
just before everyone leaves, I just want to wish everybody a very happy Diwali in advance because I see some people finish their question and leave. So I thought I'll take this opportunity to wish everybody and their families a very happy Diwali and a happy new year ahead. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Neeraj Pansinka from Goldman Sachs. Please go ahead. Sir, thank you. Hi, Vikas. And Hi, Neeraj. Uh, Hi. Two questions on some changes of area. Actually, if you see the presentation done on 20th May 2018, the the area for, you know, the Verli was actually the, if you look at Ivan Verli, it was 1 million square feet mall and hotel of 0.68 million square feet. And right now, there are, the changes are like a mall is 0.8, office is 0.9, hotel is 0.15. So, and similarly, we also had commerce two, commerce 2, phase 2, which is commerce 3. It was 2.3 million square feet then, and now it's 1.8. So can you tell me some more changes that has happened during that period since then in terms of uh, your area of each of the larger projects? I'm more concern, concerning about the commerce 3, Ivan, and, uh, actually, uh, Ivan, if you see, you stack up all of that, that is pretty much similar to what we've uh, right, right. shown in the other one. And uh, Commerce 3 had a hotel component. Okay, so Commerce 3 had a hotel component, which we have taken off in, uh, in this presentation, because we are, not, uh, we are not sure whether we are going ahead with the hotel component. But you still have an option to build in that area, right? Because of the we have we have a lot of it will rebalance. We have a lot of area to be built around uh, Goregaon itself. Okay, so whatever is 2.3 minus 1.8 with half a million square feet, that is available in Goregaon for us to build anywhere uh, within our area. And in all probabilities, maybe as a part of Commerce 3 itself. Okay, okay. And uh, can you also give a breakup of the Borivili uh, site? Uh, what is the breakup that you have right now of? The Resi Mall Hotel. About uh, 4.5 million square feet of uh, Resi. Uh, it's about 1.2 million square feet of uh, mall, and it's about 0.2 million square feet of hotel. 0.3. And commercial? Uh, commercial is a separate uh, thing. That's about a million square feet. Uh, but uh, that is coming in from the next phase, which we will be doing adjacent to the Borivali property. Right, right, right. And uh, the, what is the status of that particular land parcel of that commercial that you have? Like, so there we've got uh, approvals. We are now looking at uh, vacating the site and all that. We've got approvals from the, the department. Right. And just if I can ask a last question, what is on that particular site where the Borivili commercial is coming, what is the total carrying value right now in the balance sheet, in to the total cost? Uh, sorry, Anira? What is the total cost you are carrying for that particular commercial uh, land site? If for Borivili? Uh, right now, uh, you know, there have been very small costs which have been incurred so far. The main cost will come in as we get into the redevelopment of that property. So right now it's a very small cost which is being uh, carried in the books. So Neera, just let me clarify yeah. that the million square feet next to Borivili that we are talking about is a slum redevelopment. <coughs> and this is the first slum redevelopment of its kind where the slum developers, have, uh, slum owners have approached us because they saw our building getting built next door. All of them, we've got a 100%, virtual 100% mandate from them to, uh, you know, uh, build their uh, rehab component and utilize the free sale component. So that's how this uh, a million square feet of uh, office building has come about. And uh, so what Somil told you is that our cost will be the cost to build the rehab component for which we will get the free sale uh, ourselves. And that's why very little cost has gone in right now. Only some documentation, some premiums that we have paid for getting our approvals and uh, all that. Any rough guesstimate of uh, where, how much would be the total cost of an equivalent uh, per square feet for this commercial area? Uh, you know, okay, if you're, if you're saying guesstimate, it will probably be about 3,000 rupees a square foot or maybe even less than that. Okay, got it. Thank you very much for the update. Yeah. Thanks. And wish you a happy Diwali. Well. Thank you. Happy Diwali to you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tanuj Mukherjee from Bank of America. Please go. Or is Kansi now plans? 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 Or is constructing at multiple sites for multiple projects? You know, for example, the Urivili Mall, Burli Mall, Iwen, uh, Exquisite Three, Commerce Phase Three. So could you just give an idea about what is your construction cost outflow for the next two years? Uh, can you take that offline because, uh, you know, you have uh, asked us uh, a question where 
we'll have to consolidate everything put together. So you can take that offline with uh, Somil or Mayank. We'll be more than happy to give you. But you rightly said that uh, as a company, uh, you know, we are doing construction uh, or building more than what we've ever built. And, uh, you know, all projects are on. You can see we've actually topped up in Borivli. We're almost topping up in Ulun. And these two projects, the five buildings and this <coughs> put together is probably 10 million odd square feet of construction that we are doing. And uh, as we speak, we have more than 20 million square feet under construction. So, yes, a very exciting phase for us. And, uh, you know, we are all geared up. Somil will give you all the future uh, expenses that we've planned out. And uh, you can take that offline from me. Thanks. I'll discuss with Somil and wish you a happy Diwali and a happy new year. Thank you. Happy Diwali to you as well. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Manish Gandhi, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Vikas. Hi, Hi Kamil. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. Uh, so my question is more uh, on a macro thing. So with three things happening simultaneously, like never before seen the infrastructure changes in Mumbai, at the same time the cycle in this fifth or seventh year in the down cycle, and the structural changes happen. So with Vikas, uh, you have many cycles experience. So how do you think the Mumbai real estate market will play out in the next 10 years? And uh, with this kind of infra, uh, which are the new areas which can be opened up for the development? You know, uh, so let me start with the infra bit. Uh, uh, typically in uh, India, infrastructure follows people <coughs> and not the other way around. Uh, typically, internationally, you will see that people, uh, you know, governments build infrastructure, and once they build infrastructure, people start staying around it. In our case, people start staying, they have, you know, uh, issues of commuting, then the government puts this uh, metro. If you see the metro on Western Express Highway, it's only catering to people who already exist and live. So quality of life for people will go up here, and hence the real estate demand will increase here, and maybe prices may go up here as well. So that's the little bit of the infrastructure bit. Uh, to answer your question, how the market will look 10 years uh, ahead, I always uh, get reminded of what Warren Buffett said, that your rear view mirror is always clearer than the windshield. So I would like to answer this by looking at the rear view mirror. When the Lehman crisis happened in 2009, we had completely written off everything, you know, uh, and, and we thought that, you know, this is like doomsday and everyone predicted that nothing is going to happen. So I would say that the first thing one needs to do is get out of that thought. If you look at the rear view, you'll want to get out of that thought. These are, you know, uh, issues that have happened literally every decade or two decades, some worse, some not so as bad, and then, you know, uh, whatever. The Great Depression to what happened in Lehman crisis. So I'd say that first, get out of that mindset. Two, uh, you know, real estate is no different from any other business. Uh, and 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 so I would say that uh, you know keep to your basics, uh, have low leverage, uh, completely consider cash is king, and uh, you know uh, 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 liquidity or cash flows more important than profit. Uh, you know you continue to make sure that you have your cash flows, your com your commitments to uh, the external market, your bankers again very very important because your reputation rides on this. And the most important thing is the customer writes the biggest check of his life when he buys an apartment. So respect that immensely. If one doesn't respect that, then, uh, you know, uh, you lose out on the customer. And he's the guy who's like really, you know, paying for your bills. And uh, so I, all I'm trying to say is that, you know, uh, you know, buying a house or staying in a good apartment is not going to go out of fashion. That's one bit. Two, we are an aspirational society, an aspirational, uh, you know, uh, country. And uh, many of us have seen wealth for the first time. So many of us are making more money than what our parents made in their entire lifetime. In a year is what we make, you know. Think through that. And, uh, you know, a huge change in mindset of this new India, which says that, you know, uh, I'm going to live by spending money and not by saving money. And uh, so all that is happening, I would say. Uh, you know, I, I personally feel that, uh, uh, like, real estate as a commodity will come back for investors because they will have very little. What does gold do to you? 
gold just doesn't lose its sheen and value and you feel that you know uh, you feel safer when everything else around you is falling apart be it banks be it financial institutions be it any sort of financial product so real estate is one piece that over you know generations have been you know uh, constant people have passed on these values so i am a big believer of real estate and i feel that uh, this is going to bounce back as a big uh, investment commodity and uh, we will again and and you know this will only be good for people who have had a good reputation and going to go about doing that i mean this is my two bit uh, uh, take this as a pinch of salt uh, Uh, you know apply your own mind and take decisions accordingly but i genuinely feel i'm putting my money where my mouth is and I continue to build and uh, believe that uh, you know this is the best uh, uh, you know form of investment right and uh, thanks for the answer and uh, the second one on the similar line so uh, the kind of uh, structural changes happened in the industry and the kind of consolidation we all see so can you give any example world over something like this has happened in a city like mumbai is a big city and do you feel really that only 5 or 10 players can build this city for the decade or two decades or whatever if india has all the aspirations uh, do you feel is it genuinely possible so i must tell you to begin with that india is the oh sorry mumbai is the only, or rather india is the only country where you see 100 developers if you go to china there are only 10 people building 90% of china if you go to the us you will see handful of people building you know uh, this is a specialized industry uh, we started treating it as a mom and pop store everybody who thought you know uh, who could spell real estate started uh, you know getting into doing this business it's a specialized business be it hong kong be it singapore you uh, you take it that there are only the five six people who actually have built the entire city and that's why you see consistent quality you know there is hardly any ghost building and all that look i mean you know this business is not easy for a layman uh, you know they don't understand the financial cyclicality of business they don't understand cash flows it's a classic case these developers have taken short term loans you know a project which is a, a long gestation project and assuming that you know just because i have a plot i'll be able to sell it the minute you take away the equation of a buyer these guys don't have anything they don't have a reputation they default in one thing so i agree there is a you know like a like a systematic failure i would say uh, on part of these developers and uh, you know uh, i see uh, i i don't want to sound like a cities but i see this like an opportunity for us you know i completely see this as an opportunity and uh, um why not i mean if the whole world has you know literally five developers building their city why should mumbai be any different i mean and you are free to take your bet on the five you think uh, will you know be able to deliver we we certainly believe we are one of them and uh, we will continue to you know do things that make you guys believe that we are one of them no thank you so much and i i stay, i do believe same uh that you are one of uh, in all, almost on the top of it so uh, happy diwali to all of you and your families and thank you very much thank you money thank you thank you same to you thank you the next question is from the line of shabanu si from sbi gap securities please go ahead uh hi sir uh, uh congratulations on the result uh, i have one question so uh, i see that for this quarter the cash flow has been negative Uh, which is minus four sixty seven crores. Like, is there any particular uh, reason for that? Why the cash flow from operations went down? Uh, the only reason is, uh, you know, whenever we do a land acquisition. So, for example, you would have seen that there was a large payout which was involved as far as Thana was concerned. So, for us, uh, any land acquisition or any FSI acquisition which we do always becomes a part of the operating cash flows, and hence you would end up seeing that as a negative. uh typically if you look at the operations otherwise from uh, you know if i would just to look stand alone at borivali mulon xyz put together then those cash flows will always continue to be positive at an operating level okay thank you sir for the clarification and happy diwali same to you chief thank, thank you, you. <coughs> thank you the next question is from the line of parvez akhtar from edelweiss please go ahead uh hi good evening sir uh hi good evening for my question uh so just one question uh what are the expected launch timelines that we have now for uh the mall in burivli and worli and also for the ritz carlton 
So, uh, the Borivli Mall next year is when we finish our superstructure and hand over people to do their fit outs. Uh, Worldly uh, will be probably 2021. And uh, Worldly Mall. Uh, Worldly Mall will be 2021. And uh, Ritz Carlton is uh, 2020, next year. Oh, okay. Uh, sure, sir. Thanks. So, that's it from my side and happy Diwali. Thank you. Happy Diwali. Thank you. That was the last question. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Oberoi for closing comments. Thank you for taking time out for this call. We really like your, uh, we really like receiving feedback from you all, and uh, this only helps us uh, think better, think harder, and uh, please continue to share your thoughts uh, even without this uh, call. Uh, we are absolutely available. Both Mayank and Somil are there for you. Uh, to answer any of your queries. Uh, thank you again. Uh, happy Diwali to you and uh, your families. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you.